All right, welcome to the State of Decay 2 stream. Uh, I am Jeffrey Card, and over here we have got a special guest, who is Matt Heinegger. He's a technical hey. artist on the team, and you're, you, you technical artists do a lot of different things. Like, yeah. What, what is the sweep of your job, first off, to start? Um, kind of the miscellaneous category. We do a little bit of everything. Um, very much jack of all trades. Uh, we do lighting, rigging, tools work, uh, performance analysis. All the things. Oh, we do welcoming Brant as well. He's coming in here. So uh, everybody's everybody say hi to Brant. We are on the air. Oh, and he's, oh, oh my sorry, gosh! My what seat. are you gonna? Oh, oh, okay. oh, oh all right. Well, <laughs> hey, I put at least I put us on the, I put us on the right camera so we can see uh, everything's going on. Um, I'll take my usual. Spot. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. So. Uh, <laughs> so over here, yeah, we've got Brant Fitzgerald uh, over here with me. I'm Jeffrey Card, uh, but we were talking uh, to Matt Heinegger. Uh, yes. In fact, you were talking to him, all you people. So let's put your chat on the air. Uh, so we're talking to Matt Heinegger because mm -hmm. he is a technical artist, and uh, there was one particular part of the game that he sort of uh, pioneered—a new practice we hadn't done before. Yeah, and uh, and so IGN today released a video about our survivors, our characters in the game, and so uh, we really wanted to get Matt in here to talk about the visual side of that. So um, as Matt collects his thoughts, I am going to set up um, the IGN video to play in the background while, while we discuss this. Hi, so. everybody. Hope everybody's doing well. <laughs> um, okay. So on a, remind me to, there's a funny little story about what you're about to talk to talk about next. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'll try. I'm, we will remember that Brian has a story. I am old and infirm and I will forget. <laughs> All right. So, um, so Matt, you were you pioneered a new uh, our use of a new of a technology we had never used. Our before. use of it, yeah. So, um, in State of Decay One, we put a lot of focus on having a very diverse cast, and that's something we received a lot of praise for, and something we knew we wanted to double down on for State of Decay Two. Um, characters are hard. Um, people identify faces very readily and know when something doesn't quite look right. And so, I started investigating this technology called photogrammetry, which more or less lets you generate a 3D model from a series of pictures. So you just take a whole bunch of photographs from different angles, feed them into the software, tune a bunch of dials, press a button, and out pops a ridiculously high poly 3D mesh. Um, and we started using that. Uh, well, first I experimented with like some props and you know trees and fire hydrants and stuff like that. And <laughs> Still lives. Yeah, it didn't, it was okay, but it wasn't great. It was by no means faster than doing it the old fashioned way. Um, but then I tried scanning a head, and that was ridiculously awesome. Um, <laughs> so after that, we started scanning a couple more and trying it out. We, um, so we ended up in our vertical slice. We had myself, Andy, uh, Minters, Keeley, and Krista. And those five heads just turned out so great that we decided this is how we're going to do all of our heads from now on. So every single character in State of Decay 2 is a real person. They are all people that we have invited into the office and scanned, and they're real people's faces. Goodyverse points out, yeah, the new characters look so good. Uh, yeah, people have been really impressed with it. Extremely happy with how they turned out. Um, it's rare that we find a process that is both faster and better. Usually you get one <laughs> or the other at the expense of the other. And yeah. this generates heads um, at least twice as fast as doing them by hand, and it gives us actually... Um, more variation than we would normally get doing that by hand. Um, like with State of Decay 1, Scott would start off with a generic kind of blank mannequin head. That was our generic human head, and then kind of push and pull and you know manipulate it to get the face that he was looking for. It's Maya or Marcus or you know, whoever. Um, when you're doing that kind of thing, you kind of have to err on the side of conservative features, because like if you want to give someone a big chin, you don't want to go so big that they turn into like you know a DreamWorks character. So like, <laughs> you want to keep them fairly realistic. And so, you, in order to prevent yourself from crossing over that line into unrealistic, you tend to go with kind of the same features. Um, when we're scanning real people, we can scan like someone with a Jay Leno chin, and then we actually have a character in the game with a big chin. It's <laughs> entirely doable. So it's like you kind of, instead of like starting with the most, you know, average generic features and, and carefully po poking outwards into, into more, you know, experimental areas, you start with crazy differences. Yes. And you have to maybe pull them in a little bit to match them to Not your even. skeleton. Um, we, we also, so after we did the initial test, he started trying to push these crazy features back 
into the range of our same generic head for the purposes of like eyes, because like all of our characters share the same teeth and the same eyeballs. It's really creepy when you turn off the because they have to be animated and stuff, right? Yeah. Like those those bits like need yeah, bones so, and things in them. So for the sake of animation, we had them all in the same place, and we didn't yet have the technology to like shift the eyes. But if you look at real people, their eyes are differences. They're, yeah, they're, they're spaced differently. And... You, you and I have very different shaped heads. Yes. Like, you know, we, I, we, we would have to be rigged differently if we were mm -hmm. 3D models. And so um, when we did this first pass and he started mushing the photogrammetry heads back onto the same rig, they started looking the same again. Oh, and so we yeah. went back and did some additional tech on the rigging end to basically push the rigs according to which head was being used. So we've got a question about um, hoods and hair and things like that. Were those mm -hmm. also scanned or? Uh, no. So the faces were the only things scanned. We actually scan um, right about to the, the ear line and the top of the hairline and then kind of put that onto a generic bald head. And even beards were not allowed during this process, uh, right? No, we can do like five o'clock shadows and that was about it. The this hair is, this is, is why you won't see my ugly mug yeah, in and the game. That's also one of the me. reasons I refuse to uh, shave this. Yes, Frank exactly. <laughs> Same here. It's like we yeah. had the opportunity, but Brant and I were like, what? Mm. no, this is the only way I look good. <laughs> no, I, I would look like a 47-year-old baby. <laughs> yeah. Which is disturbing in every, I mean, every conceivable sense. So, yeah. Yeah, we do have High Cadet in the game, actually. Oh, yep. yeah. So, um, yeah, High Cadet's in the chat so here. So, last, right around PAX last year, PAX Prime, um, we had five of our fans come in and get scanned. Uh, and actually, we've got a screenshot if you want to show. Uh, uh, where? Did like, I send you that over I, Slack? Uh, oh, the one of the, all the different faces? Yeah. I thought you didn't want me to oh, use that. I'm okay. sorry. I didn't, sorry. Get that, I didn't get that prepped. Oh, wow. The production I can value on I this. can probably track it down, though. <laughs> okay. I can probably track it down. So, let's switch into chat mode. I'll look for it while you talk. Okay. Um, so let's see what else. Uh, it's really kind of interesting for me playing the game because since I did the scans for all of these people, I have met every single person in our game. So <laughs> at no point can I sit down and have generic survivor. It's always, oh, hey, look, it's Danny and it's Mike and it's Sia. And, you, know, um, you know, we've got a couple of people from around the office. And so you guys will occasionally play and notice Mike the pizza man. Uh, but you, yeah. you also have the opportunity to play a generic character. There, there it, is. it is. Yeah, that's I'm trying to find this. Thing. Mike's the pizza guy in our game is. Uh, I'm so happy he's in there, um, because uh, because I've been I've been buying pizza from this guy for a decade now, and it's it's nice to uh, to see him running around in the game. Yeah. So um, this is sort of my clutch together <laughs> view of this of, of this. Yeah. Image. So these are all of our characters right now. I think all of these are used. Um, uh, so is is this is this the number of, of, of faces we have in the game, or are there even more beyond the, this? Uh, this is every face we have right now. Um, we have scanned more than this, but um, these are the ones that we've gotten finished to game ready. It takes time to process them and, yeah. get, and get them, because it's not just like you scan it and then boom, it's in the game. Right? right, there's a lot of work that goes in after I'm done scanning. <laughs> Carol, right there, yep. <laughs> is, is, is in the office today testing the game. <laughs> and we want to be careful not to like out specific people too much, because some people might not want necessarily their name and their face identified uh, on the internet. But uh, is Haikadet on this list? Yeah, he's Chris, right where there. Is he? he's oh, right oh there. there he is. Yeah, so there's Haikadet right there. So you can Minus the beard. Him. I don't yeah. even recognize him. Yeah, I know. So yeah, so he had this <laughs> massive beard that he shaved off. Shaved off just for the sake it of... It was a uh, massive December. beard. Oh, yeah. yeah. It, it was, was like years of work. Yeah. Years of work. So we really appreciate it because his face is what is one of the most interesting and awesome ones in the game. So it's it's great to have him in there. So I'm going to switch back into chat mode here. Yeah, it's really interesting for me going over to someone's desk to like troubleshoot a problem and my mom is on their mind. <laughs> <laughs> it's really weird. That's funny. <laughs> wow, that's awesome. Uh, yeah. So yeah. So each, so some. So there are a few people that that you know that all of us know personally because people that we've worked with on the list. But most of the people are just a friend of a friend, like you yeah. know somebody that that I happen to know or you happen to know or someone in the office invite you know invited half their Facebook friends to come in and, and get their face right. scanned. We started looking for like you know um, talent agencies to get like models in and stuff, and and we decided we want like everyday people, right? We don't want people, we don't want only people who are good enough, like pretty enough to be models. We want everyone. It's about everyday people. We're not doing like, you know, the Nathan Drake with the chiseled jaw. And perfect. <laughs> we want normal average people. Yeah. And so we put out a call to uh, friends and family. So like, 
everyone in the lab, tell your friends and family that we're doing these face scans, and so bring people in. And we got a lot from that. Um, I think uh, one of our guys put a call into like the local Seattle indie devs and had a bunch of them come in. And, yeah, it's yeah. been an interesting process. Pulled from a lot of different places, and 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 yeah, to try to you know to get the, the sort of the range of different faces that we needed. Real Zombie pointed out, he, he shouts, "I saw some Asians." Uh, yes. and <laughs> that was uh, an interesting challenge of getting the right mix of everyone. Yeah, because it's yeah, it's it's sort of like it's easy like you know it would have been easy for you just calling friends and family to like especially calling family. You get a lot of white people in here oh, yeah. if you wanted to, but like we needed to get like a, a nice you know sampling of the people of America. Which is, right. you know, which is a much kind of a different process. Yeah, we've actually, um, we scanned well, well over 200 people. Um, most of them are uh, still kind of waiting in the wings to be processed, but uh, the vast majority of the remaining ones are white people. <laughs> so we're probably going to be setting up another session potentially for DLC. I don't know, we'll have to see how the schedule goes and everything. But Yeah, they were asking if the, if the, if the list of faces is going to be expanded over time, and, and we certainly hope to. Yeah, yeah, I hope so, yeah. Sev Arctic says, uh, I respect the F out of uh, that decision not to have every character looking like Ryan Gosling. That being said, if Ryan Gosling be... <laughs> is watching, come on in, we'll scan you. <laughs> no, yeah, I mean, it would be, I would be interested in playing a game where every single character looks exactly like Ryan Gosling. So that, that feels like that could be a whole other interesting sort of thing. No, um, but uh, all, kid all kidding aside, yeah, it's super, it was super important to us to extend sort of uh, what we started with in State of K1, which was... You know, this is a game where everyone has the chance to survive, and it's not just your your standard buff super soldier ex special <laughs> forces white dude, right? Right. So, um, uh, yeah, this uh, is this is everybody's chance. Right? Steve du uh, Steve Dulafian asks, uh, how many hair options are there? I don't know if we need to get into exact numbers or anything, but like, just hair was just a different process, wasn't it? Or yeah. This uh, this did not handle hair at all. Basically, well. When we scanned people, a lot of them wore a headband to pull their hair back so we could see their hairline. Um, hair is pretty much hand modeled in this game, and we mix and match hairs to go with faces. So, and although we have. actually see somebody with hair. Yeah, although we have a lot of faces, you're going to meet more characters than this as you play the game. So, you're going to start seeing faces pop up more than once. We try our very hardest to not have like the same face twice in your community. But you will eventually, the longer you play, you'll start seeing um, repeats. And, yeah. we and, and there's mix, no avoiding that, yeah, right? We yeah. mix that up by having different hairstyles. You can get a very different looking person with very different looking hair. Yeah, that's true, and also and also different outfits. I mean, one, yeah, you know, one, one one choice we get, one question we get a lot is is about you know whether uh, <laughs> whether play whether characters can have you know you can swap their outfits around. And actually, we, we ended up making the decision to not have their outfit be changeable in part because you know part of what you know people always make jokes about yoga pants in our mm -hmm. community, but. Maya is memorable partly because of her face, her hair, her outfit, her yoga pants. Like mm -hmm. that entire ensemble is that impression of Maya in your head. And if we want these characters to be memorable to you, you know, like having their, them have all of the options at their disposal to say, look, you remember this woman, uh, you know, Zyna Tinky with her, with her like pale, is that pale blonde or gray hair? Her green shirt with the yellow sleeves, the jeans, the headband, like all of that. Uh, really, yeah, you know, it, it sort of leaves an impression in your mind. Uh, so there was a question up here that you were looking for. Yeah, I can't find where it went. Uh, there it is. Uh, Intrepid Pioneer was asking uh, if players can be chubby. <laughs> um, that is something we really wanted to tackle, and we just simply did not have the time and resources to get in there. Is, um, is it mostly an animation issue, like a rigging issue? Yeah, that's a lot of it. Um, you can't just take a character and inflate a little bit and have something different. You know, people move differently, they behave differently, clothing fits differently, uh, getting uh, different uh, body weights, uh, it's, it's a lot harder than that. And yeah, so the... we would cut down the number of variations you see on a character. So rather than having like 80 different uh, shirts that this character could have, they end up with maybe half of that per character. But and it severely limits the options of the mixing and matching kind of stuff. Yeah. But there is there is kind of an interesting effect, though, that comes from the influence of the faces, because a lot of the characters wear a lot of bulky clothes. Mm -hmm. So if a character has, like, a really uh, sort of narrow face, and they have a, you feel like, oh, they're wearing a lot of bulky clothes. But if they have more of a fleshy face, you think that maybe some of that bulk comes from their body. And so you can still give the impression of having characters who are heavier or lighter, but it's not because we've modeled a special right. we, chubby character. We unfortunately don't have, like, the pastor will... 
kind of character <laughs> in this game, right? Yeah. Um, Lou, sorry. Lou said, I came to the office to get scanned, but I s shaved the wrong area and they sent me home. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, this was. Yeah. We already had Brazilians in the game. Yeah. We do actually um, scale height a little bit, though. So we do have some height oh. variance so that not everyone is quite the same. The one Green Man was just asking that. What about height? So, yeah, yeah, so there is a little height. bit of variance. Yeah, it's a lot easier to change someone's height than it is to change their weight. <laughs> and uh, and that's, yeah, you can like make little subtle changes because they're already, the characters are already smart enough to deal with things like I'm standing on ground that's a little bit higher. One mm -hmm. of my foot's up. Or, like, we've, got, we've got a lot of that kind of stuff going on. So being a little I taller, a little help. shorter. Yeah, the IK stuff compensates, mm -hmm. right? Um, you know, interesting with the uh, shaving, we actually, when we did our face scanning session, or one of our sessions anyway, we had a guy come in like an hour after he was supposed to be here. I was sitting around in the, in the office waiting on a Saturday for an hour for some guy to show up, and he walks in the door, gigantic like lumberjack beard <laughs> I'm, like, I'm sorry man i can't scan this this is not useful and so he turned around he left he went to the corner store and bought a razor and a can of shaving cream and shaved in our bathroom just so that he could be <laughs> in the game wow that's awesome <laughs> oh that's why it looked like somebody murdered a squirrel in there yeah <laughs> oh i was wondering what happened that day um so Underwhelming Games has a question about uh, character stats. And so wh why don't we go in a little bit into sort of how the other elements that kind of go into to, to identify a character and who they are. And we can please keep asking questions uh, about the visuals, though, because we're, we're going to kind of overlap here a little bit. Uh, but um, Underwhelming Ace asks, can your characters learn skills like medic or farming, or is it going to be the same as the first one? Um, so you'll notice uh, that on the screen here, this character has got five skills, right? They've got marathon, which is uh, a specialization of cardio. They've got wits, they've got fighting, and they've got weapon handling, which is a specialization of shooting. And so all characters have some form or another of these four skills, some kind of physical skill, a mental skill, a fighting skill, a shooting skill. And then there's this fifth slot. Um, and this fifth slot is used for uh, whatever skills they use to benefit their community. In this case, um, uh, what's her name? Allison. Allison is uh, an expert in utilities, which means she she knows electrical and plumbing systems. And so there's certain things around the base that she can make better than anybody else. Um, and there's certain things that, that actually you can't make at all unless you've got a character like her. But not, not all characters start with a fifth skill. A lot of them have just a blank spot there. And so when a character has a blank spot, you can get a skill book and you can teach them that skill. And they'll start at the very bottom of the skill. They won't have a specialization. You know, you'll have to sort of build them up over time. But they, they will, they, you can sort of customize to that degree. And so they'll end up actually gaining a trait up here that says, I learned about, elect you know, uh, be, I learned how to be an electrician on the fly or something like that. Um, that You can tell level story. those skills up, yes. Yeah, you can level those skills up. Basically, anytime you do something um, in your community, uh, like you use, use a base facility or something like that, if it's relevant to one of those skills, then all the characters in your community who have that skill will get a little bit of experience in that skill. And over time, it'll, st it'll steadily build up. So that means that, that characters that previously might not have, like in the first game, might have been just useless and you would have taken out to the back of the barn, <laughs> um, can, can actually be really important if all your other characters already have like a community skill. Yeah, no, they might they might end up actually being some of your more flexible characters. Which you know, if, if you're going for flexibility, like that's you know, you you've got a, a particular hole in your community you want to fill, uh, that might be a great way to fill it instead of trying to wait you know until you find the exact right person. Uh, so this guy Ben, he's got craftsmanship. That's his his thing. So that means that he's good at constructing things, crafting things. Uh, you know, he that can be specialized in a couple of different directions, um, and you can see that. Uh, Oh, there's a good question from Joa. Uh, is it possible to get rid of a skill and use a different one? Uh, no, once a character's got a skill, they're kind of locked into it. That's uh, that's sort of, I mean, that's, and actually there's some there's some characters who have skills in that bottom slot. Things like, you know, in the original game, you remember sexting uh, was one of our favorite skills. Uh, there are skills like that that fill that bottom slot. And the character, you know, they've got some advantage usually from, from whatever fifth skill they've got. But once they've got a fifth skill, they're kind of a specialist already. They don't have any room in their brain for anything else. Like, you know, I think if I tried to learn to be an electrician right now, I'd probably fail. I'm starting too, too late in my life. I've learned too many other skills. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so, so that's how that works. So, you know, uh, if you're, if you're a psycho, you know, maybe you'll end up taking people out to the woodshed if you want to replace them. But hopefully, <laughs> the, you know, the thing is, that was one of the troubles. Somebody asked me in, in Discord, in, in Discord this morning, um, 
if uh, you know if, if you could have a character who is just a complete train wreck, who just like all of their traits are bad, everything about them is terrible. And I said, uh, you know, that that, that t potentially, you know, once in a blue moon, you might get a character who's like that. But um, the problem is, like, as people were testing the game around here, like, if they ever got a train wreck, people just kept reporting to me. Well, I just took that character out and murdered them. <laughs> yeah, you just don't want them. You just don't want them. And like, so I mean, so we want you to invest in these characters, and so usually a character, there's a limit to how bad they could possibly get, uh, because we, we you know, we, we want you to, to see the potential value in every person, because that's kind of part of what the message of this game is, is, you know, each individual person is potentially valuable, especially, you know, you get into zombie apocalypse territory, there's no expendable humans out there. Is there a, is there a limit to how many traits a character can get? Uh, yeah, there sort of is, and look, uh, Jurgen's coming in, let's, yeah, uh, let's welcome Jurgen. Um, we'll answer that in just a second. Uh, you want to? You might want to sit on the edge of the How couch the there, or uh, either, either works for me. Whatever works here. So I'm gonna head back to work. Okay. So okay. Well, he, go ahead, have Matt. Thank you very much, Matt. By the way, for coming. Bye, in. Matt. And, yeah. Everybody, big thank you to Matt. And uh, yeah, we, we we owe a lot to, to his uh, pioneering this technology for us, uh, so we can get these characters in. So let's uh, quickly introduce uh, Jurgen. This is Jurgen Cherna. He is a programmer uh, and. Among many things that he's done on this game, uh, he has worked on the character generation system. And yeah, get you all situated there. So uh, where, where is our, that's what we're doing. So we're watching the, uh, the IGN video silently in the background to sort of uh, you know, talk about how characters work. And so, I don't know, maybe we should sort of like build this up. Uh, oh, hey, uh, Verse Twitch says, finally a face to the Discord name. Uh, so, yeah, uh, Jurgen has participated on our, on our Discord channel uh, quite a bit, and so, yeah, people... Mostly I lurk, I think. Yeah, I just, uh, but, I, but I am in there, and my name is uh, recognizable, so... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> weird characters and everything. So, uh, let's see, so, um, Rio Cuxian asks, uh, will a character's physique affect their stamina or endurance, like how long they can sprint? Uh, it depends on what you mean by physique. Like, like, you know, like Matt said earlier, um, you know, we've, we don't have like a huge differences in, ca in, in, in characters, like visual body types. Um, but if you're talking about their physique, like if you mean their cardio skill up here, it, it, it does make a big difference. Um, and I mean, so there's the traits that can talk about their history and what they, you know, what they were doing, maybe like if they were personal trainers or things like that, that will also affect their, you know, cardio skills and, and uh... So is it possible to get a personal trainer with asthma? Uh, yeah, probably. Uh, it, it really kind of depends. We've got this kind of complicated system behind the scenes. Actually, let's, why don't we just sort of build this from the ground up a little bit, like how, how it works. So um, on one side, there is, you know, the characters, like, uh, physical appearance. There's, you know, the there's the the the, the face, their model, uh, the voice that they use, um, and and their name and sort of their cultural background. That's kind of one set of things that's that's determined about the character that that is sort of uh, makes you know sort of their impression in your mind of who of who they are. You know, visually uh, gives you sort of the little uh, mental tags to apply to them. But then uh, you've got oh, hey, get back get back to the screen here. But then you've got um, under the hood how the character actually works. Is determined by these their traits. Uh, so her, this woman in particular, she's an auto detailer, a rifle collector, and I think that said uh, she has a, a was a high pain threshold. I think is what that said before it just went into shooting mode here. Yeah, high pain threshold. And so traits kind of come from from different parts of your life. Like 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 some of them are part of your life history. Some of them are personality traits that you have. Uh, some of them are interests that you have. Some of them are careers that you've had, hobbies, uh, and we kind of divided all of these up into different categories so that one character wasn't a, like so we wouldn't get one character who says I'm a firefighter and also an engineer and also right. a medic and also uh, you know uh, uh, and a school teacher. Right. Even though technically I'm sure there's at least one person in the world who has that entire life story. Kind of d detracts from the image of the character if there's too many like you know conflicting messages being sent. I think it, it helps us kind of give you an idea of this person. Oh, it's the person who did this before. You know, like it, it gives you kind of something to focus on. So yeah, like if you the more work the player has to do trying to figure out who the character is, the harder it is for them to sort of quickly engage with them. And and this is a game where you you're controlling lots of different characters. So the faster we can get you to quickly sort of grok who this person's supposed to be. The easier it is for you to to like attach to them and remember them, uh, but then once they have the traits, each of those traits like like I like I was drunk with power by the ridiculous tools <laughs> that you gave me uh, to work with because each of those traits can do like scads of different things to the character. 
like we have this entire um it's like brian and i both you know we had brian here last week to talk about the base building system mm -hmm. and he but he and i both were tapping into the same universal system of buffs yeah that stretch across the entire game. i mean i think i think part of the thing here is that it makes your job almost harder to have a lot of things you can do with it because it puts a lot of the responsibility on you to make it so that the trait uh like description and what it says kind of is intuitively understood by the player to affect the things it does because it means that you have to make sure that like if somebody gets a janitor you know trait that the, since it can have so many different effects they would kind of intuit what that would give the character rather than having to you know go in and read the specific numbers and all the different stats and try to figure out like oh what is you know plus 15 to this and minus five to this and you know like so it's a lot of numbers right so you have to kind of distill it down so that it's 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 uh, cohesive, I guess, or, or intuitive. Yeah, yeah, and, that, and that's actually, you know, some of the bugs that I've gotten over the course of development was people playing a game and saying, hey, I got a janitor, and I expected them to do this. And yeah. instead, they did the opposite. What are you thinking? And I'm like, I, well, I had this entire thought process in my head, but <laughs> I can't put that thought process into your head. So, right. you know, all I have is the word janitor, its description, uh, the reports of, like, what buffs it gives you, and if it doesn't make sense to you... Then I've done it wrong, and I need to try again. You know? How many how many traits did you add? Uh, there are over twelve hundred starting traits in the game, and then there's others that we use. Like we actually, because the trait system is so versatile, we've used it for a bunch of different things. Your injuries are secretly traits uh, behind the scenes that get reported in a different way, stuff like that. So there's more traits than just like the twelve hundred some, but the twelve hundred some are the main ones that define your character. It's gotta be hard for you to keep in in your head why your justification for every single trait <laughs> when you made 1200 of them oh yeah no see so yeah, sometimes i'll get a, I'll, I'll get a complaint about a trait and i'll look at it and i'll be like what was i thinking that doesn't make any sense but but i think back to the question that brant was asking about the asthma like yeah we i mean part of the tools that we we created aren't just what the mechanical effects are but also how they're uh you know uh composited to create a character yeah. and and we do have blacklists for things that are like yeah, it maybe doesn't make sense for this person. Like you said, the number of careers, for example, is one of those, right? Yeah. Like we don't want to, we don't want you to have multiple careers because it's kind of, it's it's difficult to distill it out. But also yeah. things like uh, there's there's like a, a couch potato trait, and there's also a like a, a an marathon, avid jogger trait. Yeah. And you're like, okay, somebody says they're an avid jogger and a couch potato. I mean, yeah, again, you could write a character, right. you know, if you're trying to be very clever, who somehow navigates that. But if you're just looking at it, it just looks like a mistake Yeah. if you, if, if you see that on a randomly generated character. So so there's this entire, like, elaborate tagging system behind <laughs> behind the scenes where, like, we, I, we can put tags on different traits that say, okay, you can only have one trait of this set. Or you can, or if you have a trait from this group, you cannot have a trait from that group. Like if you have a trait that insinuates the character is fantastically wealthy, you cannot also have a trait that suggests they were fantastically poor um, at the same time because it just it it, it it starts to you know yeah just give a weird impression. Mm -hmm. Um, so a lot, I've heard a lot of folks asking about, um, how many different leader types there are. And that's something we could probably go into too, though, though, I think we're not going to answer a lot of questions specifically about leaders because that gets into the end game stuff. And I think, uh, folks, especially if Fogey has been holding back on that, I think we should hold back on it too. Um, but you'll see here that, uh, this character is a leader. So community standing, um, is an important aspect of your character. So each character, uh, when they're brand new and they're invited into the community, they start out as a recruit. And then they could progress from a recruit to a citizen, uh, which is at the point when they're a citizen, you get to learn more about them. And then when they become a hero, they unlock um, a special bonus. So this guy, he had one, I'll back it up a little bit, called setting the pace. Uh, and this, so your, your hero bonus is actually derived from your traits. Like each of the traits has a potential to offer a hero bonus. And when your character is generated, one of the potential hero bonuses your character could have gets selected as their official one. And so this guy, you know, uh, he's got uh, setting the pace, which, it gives everyone a, a, a speed bonus when they're doing things in the in the um, in the in the facilities, mm -hmm. and and I think I believe that one comes from him being a shop teacher. So because he's used to you know running a, a shop full of a bunch of kids all trying to uh, do uh, you know crafting work uh, and get a lot done in a certain amount of time, because he's really used to managing that. Having him around as a hero means that he can you know he can get people uh, working quickly, getting stuff done. And and he and because of that, you know, he's a great person to have around the base. So something that was going to take you 15 minutes now takes you 10 minutes. So we have we've had uh, a very persistent questioning about special relationships. Oh, between survivors, like you know, romance and stuff like that. We don't 
uh, now correct me if I'm wrong, we don't explicitly have like people pairing off or anything like that. Well, well we don't have, yeah, I mean, we, we do, uh, we do tell stories about people's relationships, but we don't have, I guess, like a procedural yeah, system. Yeah, we don't have a system for, to pursue uh, right. those kind of uh, on their own. Uh, and I think, you know, I, I, I could be wrong, but I think that our content is more, like our missions talk more about like your family uh, than yeah. necessarily your romantic. Uh, but there are, I yeah, mean, there, there are, are romances here and yeah. there, yeah. I, I think there's a, uh, the thing that this stuff is like, you know, we've seen a lot of, of sort of romance systems in games or relationship systems in games where it tends to kind of just get watered down over time. Like, mm -hmm. oh wow, if every single character has got a relationship with every single character, it kind of fades into this sort of like miasma of like everyone thinks things about people, but I can't remember any one particular yeah. of them. Um, and so it's just it's like more this of meter a... feeling too, right? Where you're like, yeah. I just keep giving the, them these presents until they like me enough to want to go out with me, and that just like feels very weird, yeah, and just... like un uncomfortable, and like you don't want to get into that <laughs> yeah. territory. If you start thinking of reality working that way, you're going to be very disappointed by life and possibly disappoint some other people. Yeah. Um, so so yeah so uh, instead we basically when there's an actual story to be told that's going to have you know dialogue and events and, and things you know surrounding the actual relationship, then the relationships come into play. And you'll see them, you know, reflected in the characters. You'll know who's who, you know, who is brother and sister, who's, you know, uh, you know, romantically connected. But it's going to be driven by the story, not driven by some system. I think Garlic Burp was asking about character generation at the beginning of the game. Like, uh, there's a few, been a, a few different kinds of like, like uh, is is the question about like, I, the one question I've seen a lot is. Um, like, is the char the first character you start the game with, are they going to be random? Like, uh, the way that, say... Because in the original game, there were a lot of characters who were just sort of randos uh, off the street. But you started with Marcus and Maya and Ed. Um, so our game, the, the, the sequel, does not have a Marcus, a Maya, and an Ed. Um, there are definitely... The, the, the randomness is definitely constrained up front. Um, you know, you're, the, the initial characters, when you're playing your very first game and you're going to go through the tutorial and learning how to play, we constrained the characters up front so that we, so it would be more predictable and we could be more sure that we're giving you, you know, a good starting story and a good set of options up front. Um, but once you get out into the wild, like once you're, you know, an advanced player and you're starting new games, with skipping the tutorial, you are completely using procedural characters. And so you go out playing with your friends, you're going to have a character that nobody else, none of, none of them has. Yeah, and, and there was a question about choosing traits specifically, and we, oh. and we don't, and I mean, choosing traits is, I think, like Jeffrey said, there's 1,200 of them. Like, I'm not, <laughs> nobody's going to give you a list of 1,200 traits and go pick which ones you want. Right? Like, that's <laughs> just ridiculous. And so, um, you know, it, it, is, it is randomly generated, but when you are, you know, doing your subsequent communi communities, you get a little bit of a say of, like, you know which random characters you want. Yeah, I think yeah you could. You, and we've seen this in a lot of other games. You know, games like 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 RimWorld and Oxygen Not Included are good kind of examples of of, of, of sort of the way that you start a new game. Um, you know, in our game, you get you know the characters are all randomly generated, but you get some choice about you know what group of randomly generated characters you want to start with. Um, uh, so, yeah, by the way, those are both excellent games, and so if you haven't played them yet, uh, definitely, you know, if you're curious about how character generation uh, works, go check out those games, because they're amazing. Corbulo, uh, there are three save profiles in State of K2, yep. instead uh, of four. Uh, yeah, so you can, yeah, so you can have, like, sort of maintain three different communities uh, doing three different things if you want to at, at, at any given time. Um, let's see here. Schlock, uh, um, it, there's been a lot of questions about the paper doll allowing you to change clothing. Um, yeah. Not in this game. Yeah. Um, paper doll is always something that's high on our list when we start out a project. <laughs> uh, but because of differences in characters and things like that, uh, creating clothing that works for all characters of a certain skeleton um, is very difficult. And um, we just didn't have the time or resources to devote to making sure that every shirt worked on every male rig or every female rig. 
And, um, yeah, so and, and and aside from that too, I mean, there like 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 I was saying earlier, you know, there's there's definitely some value in in not doing that uh, because you sort of like if you have like a favorite outfit, for instance, you always like to like to put on every single character. Uh, that actually kind of takes away from each character's ability to sort of you know stand out and and, and, and kind of be themselves. This is actually one of the one of the reasons why uh, we also you know d really don't. Um, want to to go for you know a, 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 like a character creator and stuff like that is because you know like we, we want each of these characters to feel like they're they're uh, a, a unique thing that, that you mm -hmm. can never get back. If this character dies in the game, you can never get them back. And if we have a character creator system where when you lose your character, when right. you lose you know Zynatinky, you can go back and make Zynatinky again and start over again. It kind of takes a little bit of the a, a little bit of the sting out of that. And 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 the, the sting is kind of an important part of the game. Yeah. Um, I, I also think that part of it too is to help people connect with their community rather than with an individual because I think that it's if you're doing the like this is my character and I'm just going to make that in every community I think it it leads you towards a play style where you're just playing as that one character forever like you don't want to you don't care about the rest of your community because they're not your favorite character right yeah and so and it, like this is a game that is about surviving you know together like you have a, a vast selection of, of uh, well vast usually um, <laughs> <laughs> depends on how well you're playing uh, but uh, you know you have a uh, half dozen characters or whatever that you have in your community and you should feel like there's reason for you to switch between them and and not be like oh i am not playing my character anymore and so there's not you know i'm not getting anything out of it so uh sassy snake asks how do the characters become citizens heroes etc uh so basically when you're out in the world playing as a particular character um you know you're completing missions you're doing things for your community like bringing home rucksacks you're defeating zombies um a lot of this stuff um Basically, anything that you would imagine in another game, like in another like RPG, would earn you experience points. Those things earn you standing in your community, um, and so st and standing. You you see that you know right up there. That's what, where this is labeled standing. Um, and so when you're not yet a hero, I think all the characters that Fogey is is paging through on this are heroes. When you're not a hero, you actually see a bar right here. Uh, showing your progress to the next rank. And so when you're a recruit, you see a bar progressing towards citizen, and when you're a citizen, you see a bar progressing towards hero. So each time you do something that would earn you XP, uh, you know, in, in, in another game, you gain standing, and that progresses you towards towards becoming a hero. Yeah, and then uh, somebody was asking uh, about why do we have to promote a hero, and I mean, no. You mean promote them to be a leader? Yeah, or, yeah. promote them to be a leader, and no, you don't, but, the you know... There's a lot of stuff you get out of of, of, of having a leader. Of, yeah. It unlocks a lot of end game content that you're that you're going to want to have access to. And then there's also just stuff around your your base, like new options that get unlocked when, when you have a leader that aren't there otherwise. And I, I don't think there's a downside to promoting a leader, right? Like not really. Yeah, it kind of it kind of you know it, it commits you to one set of things rather than another. So it's an opportunity cost. Uh, but that's kind of about it. I mean, they could have an accident. Could, yeah, <laughs> exactly. You could, you could find another leader. Um, there was a question. Uh, somebody did ask, and I think I got distracted at one point. Uh, they asked how many traits a character can have. Um, we we try to limit it to four uh, because that's what fits comfortably in the UI. Uh, and that actually really was driven by UI initially. Um, but then also, if you have much more than four traits, it starts to just be hard to remember who the character is. Yeah. Uh, and so some so a lot of characters will have only two or three. Uh, just to, to, to keep things very simple, but um, the cap is four, and if a character somehow magically gets secretly gets traits that are more than four, you just won't see them. Uh, <laughs> like, 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 you know, for one thing, I mean, for instance, like I said, injuries are technically traits, so you are getting traits past the four, but they're not being reported as, you know, these character traits here. They're being reported when you highlight your health, you'll see that the character's got injuries, like gas inhalation or, uh, you know, stuff like that. Yeah, in some ways, there's kind of two different ideas of the trait here. It's the trait as the, the character narrative, the way we, you know, tell you about this character, and then there's a the trait as in the, the code that we wrote that we used to glue <laughs> together certain pieces of the game. And, yeah. you there's, know, like there's a it's... whole other set of traits. It's just whenever people, uh, whenever mission designers, which I also was one of those, uh, like needs to sort of remember, hey, remember, this is the character that this event happened to, we slap a trait on them. Yeah. And then Later on, if that character's still alive, we can grab them and involve them in some future part of the story. So that trait there, kept smartphone, does that have any specific effect, or is it just kind of a lore skill? It says from Chicken Men 12365. So uh, kept smartphone, uh, I believe, I think, did he already highlight kept smartphone? I'm trying, I, I need to know if, if I should go backwards or forwards. Uh, but the main thing that kept smartphone does is, is it unlocks target of sympathy. So kept smartphone, this is a person who carries their smartphone around, charges it, and looks at pictures of their family who are all dead. 
Um, and so, so that unlocked the target of sympathy hero uh, hero bonus because everyone around them was like, "Oh man, you know, I've got it rough, but look at this person. They're so sad all the time. I feel pretty good about my life." And it gives them a morale bonus. Does it does it affect their morale that they are uh, looking at these photos all the time? I'm trying to remember. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of twelve hundred. <laughs> but yeah, if if, if you didn't if, study up before if Fogey video. were to, I didn't I didn't study up on these specific ones. I did make sure that I knew the number twelve hundred. That was very ah, important. That's good. Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm slowly backing this. Oh yeah, here we go. Oh yeah, so it looks like yeah, there's no there's no there's no mechanical effect. It is just a lore thing. And and there's a fair number of those. Uh, see you later, Brent. I'll be right back. Uh, yeah, so there, there's a fair number of traits that really are just telling the story of of, of that character and who they are. Um, oh, Modding Natted asks, uh, and this is a question we answered a little earlier, but we'll, we'll jump on it again real quick. How will the skill books work that are included in the pre-order bonuses? So um, you'll notice that uh, characters have a fifth skill here. The first four skills are about action, about you know what they can do in the field. This last skill is about how they benefit their community and their base and their facilities and stuff like that. A lot of characters are missing this fifth skill. They start with, with, with nothing in that slot. And if you get a character with nothing in that slot, then you can use a skill book to, uh, to give them that skill fresh. Or if you already have a character with that skill and you just want them to learn that skill better, you can also use the skill book to level up their skill. Yeah. So like if you already have a gardener and you have a gardening book, they can get to be a better gardener. Yeah, I mean, the four, <coughs> the four first skills are, are pretty uh, fixed, the base versions of them, and then the specialization is where the variety comes in. But then we have kind of a fifth slot for, for more options for... Uh, for variety and customization of these characters, okay, we should we should talk about specializing skills actually because that's a thing that they, they go into into it in the video, um, and we haven't talked about it here yet. Um, so yeah, so each of these skills like this one starts out the top skill is always cardio, the second one is wits, the third one is fighting, and the fourth one is shooting. Um, and so if you have a vanilla character, they start with those, and, and, and the level of that skill, it, 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 they start out usually is really affected by their traits. Like if they have a lot of shooting experience, they might start with a higher shooting skill. Um, but then when you level that up to seven stars, uh, like right here you can see, you know, it, it get, fighting has the option now to choose a specialization. So this character can choose close combat or endurance, which gives them different benefits. Each of these skills has actually four different uh, specializations available, but which one, like which ones a particular character has access to, are deter uh, the, the, it's always it's usually limited. It's very few characters actually have access to all four. Usually, it's uh, it's limited to, to two or three, and it's dependent on your traits. The other thing that you can notice is that uh, there's kind of there's a distinction between the kind of more common specializations, which like oh, yeah. uh, endurance here uh, has it's that a little square by it. it had a little yellow Got square, it little. Um, which is which means that that's kind of like the one we give you unless we have a reason to give you something else. Yeah, almost every character has access to endurance. It's rare for a character not to have endurance as an option, but close combat is a special one. It's like you know, only like you know a quarter of characters will have access to close combat. <coughs> Excuse me. Ah, and that'll cold. often be driven by the traits that they get that yeah, will give exactly. them spe uh, specific specializations. So, you'll, so for instance, if you have a character who is like a, a blade collector or something like that, you'll see that they, that they will have you know they'll have a maybe a slightly higher fighting skill. But once you level it up, they will definitely have um, you know blades as a, as a specialization or, or, right. or a sword play as the name of the skill. They'll have the sword play skill as as one of their options. Uh, similarly, like if somebody like you know you spend a lot of time in the batting cages, striking uh, is that's sort of our blunt weapon specialization. You know they'll 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 have that, um, and then you know and then each of these specializations, uh, some of them unlock like backpacking for instance unlocks extra slots in your inventory and more carrying capacity. Uh, stealth makes you harder harder for zombies to notice. Striking uh, you know it, it unlocks uh, new combat abilities. Uh, assault, same thing. Like uh, it, it makes you better at handling full auto, and it also like lets you like if zombies get too close in the middle of a fight, you can kick them off you uh, with a special move. A lot of people have actually asked about um, whether focus aim uh, came back. Oh, and let me. Are we answering that? Uh, let's see here. You switch which are. Uh, yeah, we can answer okay. that in a second. Um, a lot of folks have asked about focus aim, which is sort of the time slowing ability from the original game. We didn't bring that into the second game because time slowing is very complicated in multiplayer. Uh, <laughs> you don't want to just be running around and suddenly time slows down because your friend was aiming their gun. Yeah. Uh, so we replaced it with something. If you get the gun slinging specialization, you get the ability to hit, to hit the A button to snap to people's heads, uh, which gives you some of the same benefits because usually when you're slowing time, what you were doing was trying to get on their head. Right. Uh, so you, know, it, it, you still can, it can have fancy aiming abilities, just not that particular one. 
Uh, Datitude asks, uh, can you switch which character you're controlling at any time or place, or only at outpost or the base? And uh, the latter. Yep. So, <laughs> yeah. Just, uh, I mean, switching at any time is, is uh, I mean, complicated and it kind of reduces a little bit of the risk to your character, it feels like. You know, you can yeah. get in a bad hairy situation, you see that there are zombies around, you maybe just switch away, you know, like, how do we handle that? Do we try to, you know, punish you for being around zombies when you switched, and then it's, it's kind of hairy to communicate, and, and I think that it's, it's a good compromise to let you do it at, at outposts and bases, and, uh, and those are kind of safe safe places for you to do that. Exactly, and, and because, you know, it, it's not just the base, right? Like, like, we do want you to have reasons to return to the base fairly often, but, you know, if you know you're going to be spending a lot of time across the map, the best thing you can do is make an outpost there, and then you've got a place to return to that's close right. uh, anytime you want to. So you do have a lot of freedom to sort of give yourself some flexibility there. But yeah, like, right in the middle of a fight with a Juggernaut, if we just let you, you know, bug out of that anytime you wanted to, yeah. that, that could be, that, that could have weird implications. Yep. Uh... You could, do you want to answer the question about uh, voice acting? Uh, oh, what, what was the question about How voice do you acting? handle... Uh, oh, a little bit up. Oh, oh, oh this one here. Wow. Alfred Ben says, How oh. do you handle voice acting and character personality with an essentially random system? That is a very good question. So, um... So we should actually, at some point, we should get Andy Collins in here to talk about that because he he is the one who understands that system absolutely the best. But to, uh, to sort of summarize a little bit, um, we... This game has so much dialogue recording, yeah. <laughs> because because uh, we have uh, you know more than a dozen different voices recorded in the game, and each of those voices, not all because we we do not have a Lily character in this game. We don't have a character who is is just one voice who does all of the sort of the business, right. uh, you know, the talking story. Yep, the yeah, storyline. Like, all of our all of our voices do all of the talking, um, and so. You know, so so that means that you know that not only do they does each voice need to be able to say all the normal things like hey there's zombies over there or hey we just got you know we just got a report in that there's some survivors you need to rescue or whatever not only do they all need to say that but whenever something was very personality driven like somebody wants to say hey I don't think we should help those people we need to watch out for ourselves or right. oh man I feel really bad that we didn't help those people. Those lines also had to be said by every single voice. Or even if it was things like, you know, I want to tell you about this, like, uh, uh, this family member that I had or whatever. <laughs> like, you know, like, every voice needs to talk about that one thing. And it's like, yeah. Um, but but they are written to have personality. Like, the, the voices aren't just reciting the same lines. Uh, they are what stories you get and what they tell you about themselves and, and how they talk about this. Even this, essentially the same thing as, like, there's a zombie over there. Each each voice has its own personality. That's kind of imbued yeah. in the writing sense of it. Yeah. Um, I think, that, you know, and Andy could, like, you know, we, we should definitely get Andy here to talk about exactly what he did. But, like, yeah, he even had, like, different writers writing the dialogue for different voices. Mm -hmm. Like, he would tell them, this is what the line has to be, but then he would get yeah. different, completely different submissions from, from different people so that each of these characters should feel like they are a different person uh, talking about it. Yep. We, should do an, we should do an entire stream about that, though, because it was, it, was, it was a harrowing and terrible but also amazing process. Fubark says, Voices.pack must be huge. And while it's not literally called Voices.pack, there's a reason the programmer, like, uh, source control setup says... Uh, Programmer, no audio, because <laughs> getting all the audio just uh, from our version control can take a long time. So that's uh, it is it is just massive amounts of writing he did and, and recording. Like I mean, the number of voice actors and the number of hours in the recording booth is just it's astounding. Um, Datitude asks, uh, if you fill all seven stars after specializing, is there another level of specialization? Uh, <laughs> no. I guess we technically could have done that, but <laughs> no. Uh, Super specializations. <laughs> um, yeah, there's a, but when you get to, to the seventh star, usually we do uh, unlock some new thing at that level uh, whenever we can uh, yeah. to, to make it worth it. You know, you want to get there. Um, but it's not it's not a brand new specialization. And, and when Jeffrey says new thing, he doesn't mean, you know, oh, you get another 2% to your aiming or whatever. It is like a discrete difference where when you get the f first, when you first specialize, you get kind of a, usually a discrete new thing you can do or, or noticeable improvement, like a like significant immediately, change. Yeah. yeah. And then you kind of have kind of the incremental. Oh, what the <laughs> heck? We got a brawn commercial going on. Uh, thanks, IGN. <laughs> Hey everybody, let's shave our faces so that we can get our faces scanned uh, by uh, by Matt Heinegger. Okay, anyway, um, yeah. So as you as you level that specialization, um, you 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 know it incrementally gets better, and then as you hit the seventh star, you get a second like, oh, here's a really cool thing. You know, like you get that reward for reaching that point. Um, yeah. 
And uh, have you talked about uh, about uh, skill caps? Uh, no, we haven't. Yeah, they, they do talk about it in the video, but uh, the I'm not sure the video comes into the game. Uh, but uh, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so so the um, some of your traits the new uh, will actually cap. How high is it? Like, for instance, like uh, one trait Gillette, just based on me is uh, absent minded, um, which uh, basically I think it caps What's your wits about like four stars or something I'm like that. It also reduces the weight, Bogey, the rate at which you can earn wits. Mm -hmm. um, and so, and so, what that means is <laughs> you you might spend the exact same amount of time trying to earn up your wits skill that somebody else does, but you only get to four stars and then you stop and you can't specialize, which is why I'm not quiet because I couldn't specialize in stealth. You know, this. But yeah, but so, and I think that one of the characters. In the video, and I don't remember which character it was, yeah. uh, but has that. They, like, I think they, they're, they, they, oh, yeah, they had asthma. I think, I think Ben maybe had asthma. Hey, Matt. List of different traits. Oh, it's playing audio now? Oh, crap. Oh, crap. Sorry, I, I hit the, uh, there we go. Awesome. Yeah, unfortunately, we don't have headphones on listening to uh, what's going on in our on our uh, screen, so we didn't know what was happening. Thank you, Blade of Meat Shield, and uh, anyone else who told us about the the <laughs> video that was double playing there. <laughs> okay, so I think we fixed that though, right? I think we're we're muted now. Everything should be fine. Okay, so we should go back and say the things I was saying before because yeah. probably that was probably really difficult to you hear. You're talking about being absent-minded. Yes. Okay. And forgetting so... to turn off the <laughs> sound on the video you're playing. Wow. Well, that was if that was not fortuitous. Okay. So, um, so yeah. So if you have, uh, so I believe was it was it Ben or uh, was it Iman? I'm trying to remember now who had the uh, the cardio limit. Oh yeah, it must have been Iman. Yeah. yeah uh, there we go. Okay. Yeah. So you can see. It's a little hard to see anything on the screen here, but uh... yeah, each of these skills that has not been leveled up yet has got a shadow of seven stars. Cardio's shadow stops at four, um, and that means that he can get his cardio up to four. Uh, but because he has asthma, we've capped it there, and so it stops there, and then he can't specialize. He can't get up to he can't get marathon or acrobatics or any of the other specializations that come out of cardio because he just you know, that's as far as he can go. Um, and that's not very common. Most characters won't have that, but uh, the hope was that now and then you'd have a character who, you know, they've got some really valuable skill, but they also have a really important hindrance. Because uh, you notice his asthma is not just reducing his cardio, but it's also most people start with 100 stamina. He's got 89. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I mean, that's that's the kind of thing, right? Like, even though not every character is going to have uh, like reduced max stars, they usually have some. There's, there's some trade-offs to be made where they, you know, maybe it affects like morale or it affects their stamina or their health or something like that. So there's there's usually they're not all, you know. Uh, Mary Sue characters who are just perfect in every manner. They oftentimes <laughs> have, you know, like real people, you know, some places where uh, they, they, where other characters would be better suited. Like you may, might have a character that might have better cardio and marathon runner or whatever, and you might want to use them if you're going to haul a lot of stuff on foot back to your base. And if you have a car, maybe this asthma guy could totally go out and do that because he's, you know, he look at his gunslinging and resourcefulness. He's going to find a lot of good stuff and he's going to, you know, be really good at, at firearms handling, but maybe not carrying, you know, a backpack full of meat or whatever. Exactly. Yeah. So, so this is the guy you want to bring when you're taking down a plague heart. He's not necessarily the guy you want to bring when you're, yeah, going on a, on a, long-term, you know, run to go collect a new car that you saw or something like that. Um, cake decorator. What benefit does that give? Uh, asks <laughs> Joa. So cake decorator, I, I believe that... Uh, that oh, isn't that the uh, party? That's the party planning. Yeah. So it unlocks the party planning uh, hero uh, bonus, but it also gave him the cooking skill. That's oh, the yeah. main benefit that it has, is it gives you the cooking skill. Um, so, uh, so Chicken Man, the reason I'm ignoring your question is because I actually forgot the answer to it. Because uh, there, there's a few different cases between single player and multiplayer where things might work differently. We went through a few different iterations and I'm terrified of giving you the wrong answer. So I'm sorry that I've been ignoring your question. Yeah. But we will get back, we will definitely get you an answer to that at some point. Uh, I just, I, I, I'm not gonna be able to tell you right now. Yeah, no, I think I saw some changes uh, to that logic recently too. So I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, <laughs> whatever promise you make uh, might be different. Yeah, uh, exactly. Get hands on the game, uh, so. we, we've all been through the experience of, of, of like talking about a feature that we want uh, and then ending up, you know, seeing it work out a little differently. And so, you know, for very good reasons so yeah we don't want to do that but uh one green man asks what's the worst combo of traits you've seen i can't remember the worst one um i i do know that i, I got a uh, one guy who he was a state senator and also a halo champion oh yeah yeah um and 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 his nickname from his, from being a halo champion was arbiter um, and so, but Arbiter also sounded like a great name for a state senator. Yep. And so I was like, so this guy, he just felt like this weird combination. And he had this like kind of a like, goofy smile on his face and a big like tussled hair. And I'm like, wow, I want this guy as my state senator. <laughs> <laughs> 
And I think, I mean, and to that point too, right? Like, we try in, like, when the system was uh, designed in the way that, that Jeffrey has put it together, we try to give you characters who aren't just lemons. Like, we don't want to give you a character who's like, you get this guy and you're like, oh no, like, he's taking up, like, food in my community and he just doesn't have any benefit whatsoever. <laughs> and so, we, d we do try to have the generation, even if it's, you know, random, it is not completely random where we have a bag of 1,200 traits and we're just like, here's a fistful of them, you know. We try to find something that, that will give you a, an interesting and, and relatively balanced character uh, with pr both pros and cons, so. Yeah. That's, that's, that's what we're kind of going for. Uh, somebody asked uh, what uh, what benefits stealth has in the game. We definitely, you know, we at some point we definitely want to like leave room for you guys to discover this stuff. But stealth, uh, the main benefit that it has is it makes it harder for zombies to see you. So conditions under which you might be right at the edge of a zombie's vision and a normal character might get seen, your character will not get seen um, if you've got the stealth skill. And that and that's, you know improves steadily over time. And, and there's other benefits as well. I believe that you know there's certain actions that some characters will make noise doing. And if you have the stealth specialization, you don't make noise doing those things. Um, but uh, but yeah, it's, it, it's, it's something along those lines. So definitely very valuable for your character who, if you want to send somebody out scavenging and not get into trouble, uh, you know, stealth is what you want. If you want to get into trouble, then gunslinging is, is probably a good choice. Can you change your leader once a leader has been chosen? Uh, so definitely, once a leader dies, yep. you can always replace them. If they pass away, that you can you can replace them. And so, so that, get, that definitely gives you a lot of options there. And you can and you can promote a leader uh, of the same type, or you can uh, change if you want to kind of move your community in a different direction. Uh, You're so. like, well, clearly that failed. He died. Yeah. Uh, you can <laughs> go yeah, somewhere like else. Having another warlord seems like the wrong choice. We're getting our asses sent to us. Let's do <laughs> you know. Let's try to build things instead. You know. So. So, uh, so people have asked about this portrait up here, whether, whether, whether you know, players generate it themselves or if it's procedurally generated. So I actually wrote the code um, <laughs> for that, that specific thing. Uh, and so basically the idea here is that uh, we just use the game engine to, you know, we put together the character and then we uh, capture a snapshot of what that character looks like. Um, and, you know, we have some... There's there's been changes to inside touch it. I think uh, Matt actually is the person to ask about this because he's the one who's been tweaking the values for the lighting and setup and whatever. And you can imagine it like a, a normal, you know, like a photo booth or like a you know a backdrop where you're, where you're, you know somebody's taking your your headshot. Um, similar thing to that, just done in the game engine where it captures uh, the actual. So you know like you can. So you you feel like it is the correct character. You know, it does look like that person uh, and. Uh, it, it is hard work um, that like to make the characters identifiable, you know, like yeah. to make them actually look different in the headshots and stuff like that. So there's a uh, it's been a lot of good work by uh, by our art artists. And then uh, we got a question: Can you have somebody who is just crazy, unstable, like a fanatic or a not so person? There are definitely traits that, that make people more irritable and have them cause problems in the community. Like you'll periodically have events where somebody where it says, you know, so and so started a fight with so and so, and everybody's mad now, and it'll have a hit on your morale, and it'll be a problem. And and, and there will be certain characters who tend to be instigators of that kind of thing, and you can see that in their traits. Um, so. Uh, do you know the number of names we have in the game? Uh, I used to know. It is definitely in the four digits. Yeah. Uh, but es especially if you count all of the last names, first names, nicknames, and, and not and the nicknames that are derived from the first names and the last names, right. and the nicknames derived from the traits. Like there's there's tons, tons I, of names. I think my favorite part of this name generation is the trait uh, trait based nicknames. I really love it when a, <laughs> when a character is just like he's so like known for the thing he does that like he he's got his halo handle as his like nickname. <laughs> <laughs> you know, whatever. It's, I think that's great. Um, Alfred Ben was asking whether or not uh, Alfred is can be a name in the game, and I'm I'm I can say with fair confidence that we probably included that in one of those. The, it probably is somewhere. Of list names, yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't be. I mean, I could definitely check, but uh, that it seems like it's probably it's probably on the it's probably you'll see it on on an older person, I'd mm -hmm. imagine, because we got different name lists for because because one of the things this is like one of my pet peeves um, watching uh, Fear the Walking Dead. I think I've told this story before. Um, watching Fear the Walking Dead, they have a 50-year-old woman named Madison. And the name Madison was not considered a woman's name until the mid-80s. Um, <laughs> and so that's impossible. And, and, and so, like... And so, and so all of our names are divided up by age. Uh, so you have you know names for young people, names for older people, and stuff like that. And we tried to do that across cultures whenever we could, whenever we could get access to that data. Yeah. Um, 
And that was, yeah, that was, but it was a lot of fun. I, I feel I learned so much about the naming traditions in different cultures. Um, we tried whenever we could, you know, to, to find people either at the studio or friends or uh, professionals or people who could inform us on, um, you know, uh, on different naming traditions in different cultures so we could get it right. So we had, you know, uh, you know our, our, our list of Norwegian names. We had uh, Jürgen. Uh, <laughs> you can, in fact, play as the one and only Jurgen. <laughs> yeah, if you if you keep re-rolling again and again, eventually you could get Jurgen Cherna. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the, the odds game. are the odds are small, but yeah. they're they're there. It's kind yeah, it's kind of like yeah, the odds of hitting a particular proton yeah. uh, with another proton from across the universe. But um, Fubarks is asking also about how can two survivors have the same name, and uh, they can have the same uh, like first, first name. name. Um, but what we do, you see here, this is Allison at the top, and it says Allison uh, Sakara below it. Um, and so Allison Sakara is their their character. I'm probably butchering that pronunciation. My oh, apologies. That's, that's, close. Uh, that's their you know that's their full name. But Allison is their nickname, and oftentimes those will uh, diverge. And uh, what we strive for uniqueness is the the nickname. So what you'll see them referred to as mostly in the game when other characters are you know uh, talking to them or they're mentioned in the you know a mission description or something like that we will use the nickname uh, and so those those are uh, mostly guaranteed to be unique there are some highly unlikely scenarios <laughs> where it could happen but um, uh, but yeah like that's that's what we tr do the uniqueness on like for example here we got Alexis Blackwell who goes by Lex right and so you can see like for mo even though most of the characters the, the easiest thing for most characters is to select their first name as their nickname and that's when you see most of the time but they could select something else some characters like characters with military or police backgrounds will often go by their last name um, characters <clears throat> will uh, in fact you'll, yeah, you'll see that uh, right near the beginning of the game uh, with you know no spoilers uh, but then uh, you know, but like somebody like Lex could have a name that's derived from their first name or like you were saying, you know, like, like oh, like Travis told me he he uh, ran into a community of uh, that, that had a lot of like medical professionals mm -hmm. in it, and one of them was a plastic surgeon who went by facelift, <laughs> um, and stuff like that. So you know, all, all kinds of random names in there. Uh, Hi Cadet is reminding us that it's 2 p.m. and we need to get back to work. Uh, and we agree, uh, though this has been a lot of fun, and like we've been waiting for so long because seriously, Jurgen and I started working on this. Two years ago? Yeah, uh, it's I was I've I've been here two years in May, so we're just about getting up on two years. Okay, so oh my gosh. So yeah, so it's been a long time that we've been excited about this system, eager to talk about it. And so, you know, please if we I'm sure we didn't get to a lot of your questions. Please um definitely, you know, hit us up on on, on Twitter. Uh you know, if I, I can I can really put this up here. Yeah, so Hit us up on Twitter uh, and to ask us questions. And uh, for now, we're going to say goodbye to Jurgen Cherna. Thank you for coming and talking to us. Yep, thank you for having me. And uh, yeah, and just, you know, don't forget to, to keep watching um, IGN for additional coverage uh, for the rest of this month. They're going to keep revealing new stuff about State of K2. And uh, yeah, no, we're just, we're really eager to keep talking to you guys about this stuff. So anytime they come in to talk about something, we're going to come in and, and stream with you about it. And as usual, thanks to all of our wonderful fans for coming out and, and spending time with us today. Yeah, thank uh, you for all the great questions. Yeah, we're, yeah. we're so close, guys. The long wait is almost over. I can't wait. So close. <laughs> all right, well, we'll see you all later. Awkward sign off. <laughs>